Celtic Dragons were impressive in their opening appearance, their only appearance in the Global Rugby Challenge so far. And today, they must back it up. One game doesn't make a champion. Their second appearance will be against the Scarlets, who will be looking to be much improved from their round one display. Hello everyone and welcome along to Cornflakes Group, your home of Rugby Challenge 3 and the Global Rugby Challenge, a subscriber series where you guys take the field against the world's elite. Today, we have the Scarlets at home up against the Celtic Dragons. And the Scarlets, well, they had a terrible start to their Global Rugby Challenge calendar, going down to nil. That's right, they scored no points in their game against the Corn Flakers. Opponents scoring 24 of them, and they got the big donuts, sending them home pointless. They'll be wanting to do much better than that. A team that promises a lot, but so far has delivered very, very little. It's a very good side as well. Plenty of players internationally capped. The likes of Lee, Ball, Shingler, Barkley, Davis, Patchell, Parks. Not, not capped, but Hadley Parks and uh, Johnny McNichol. Former New Zealand uh, Super Rugby players, so of a high calibre. Halfpenny, of course. Davis at outside centre as well. So plenty of experience. Plenty of capable players, but can they step it up here against the Celtic Dragons? So the Dragons were impressive, a, a massive second half display against Toulon. So then run out big winners 35 to 3 against the French club. Now staying in relatively similar position, they've got to take on the Scarlets. The starting team here for today for the Celtic Dragons is as follows one man keeping a spot, and the only nickel. Keeping a spot in the starting lineup is Sam Nicol. He'll partner Arthur Dane and David O'Callaghan in the front row. Arthur Brunso and Oscar Connolly line up in the second row, the locking partners there. Dominic Jones, Jordi De Rossi, the captain, and Frederick Loeb will be the back row for the Dragons. Into the back line, and Richard Mockler moves from fullback into the number nine jumper at scrum half. Andrew Inch keeps his place at 10 after such an impressive display for the Dragons in round one. His centre pairing will be Steve Tickogs and Bogdan Ola. While on the wings, it'll be Shane O'Sullivan and Tom James on the right. John Malcolm will line up at fullback in the number 15 jumper for the Dragons. Kickoff looks set to go. It's Elite Halfpenny with the ball on halfway. Of course, the Scarlets in the rear, the Celtic Dragons, and these fantastic green kits here for today's matchup. Miss there, and Lopez to come from nowhere and clean that one up. Here is Jones and a good little play as Rossi gets the first ball away. And Steve Tagogs could line this up out wide. Could be an early draw. Oh, no, he stepped in touch. Early try was on the offering there for Tom James. He's put a foot in touch. Oh, I can't believe it. It should be 5 0. And it's not. Here's Hughes throwing it in, and it's nicely claimed there by Price in the middle. Here it's going wide, Singler kicking it away. Early is Patchell, and waiting at the back is Malcolm. Oh, and he's put it out. He has put it out, and devastation. Foot still in play when he claimed that ball. Unbelievable there. Opportunity knocks here for the Scarlets. Again, they throw in Hughes. This time goes to the back, and it's Barkley that pulls it in, and he charges up field nice. as well for the Scarlets. Here he is, going one off to Patchell. And he's driven to Please. ground. Look at the Celtic Dragons all over this, trying to turn the ball over. It's Eva Shingler, goes wide this time. And they keep it through the backs, Boyd does well. Big pass out wide, it's two on one out here. Could he get the pass away? No. Davis was nowhere close to that offload. And the Celtic Dragons, they survive an early scare after being in a position that should have put them up by five to seven now. Here's Arthur Dane throwing to the front and it is Abruzzo gets it away to Inch. And Inch, oh, he's taken. He's got the offload away though. And trouble as Davis storms off through to turn that over for the Scarlets. Mistakes early here for the Celtic Dragons, but it's a terrible pass. Who would have thought to give that one? Hospital pass, the highest caliber there. Now goes out to Davis again, who gets caught with a good attacking tackle. Coming in from the Celtic Dragons. Now, oh, Davis going wide. They find more support. And again, it's quickly out wide here to Smith. Who offloads nicely to Patchell. And Patchell is picked up from behind and delivered over the sideline for not the first time today. Well, the Scarlets have had plenty of chance here to 
Put some points on the board. They've failed to do anywhere near that. That's Dane Law oh, looking for Bruso. Just gets it in there. Here's Inch again. He looks for the kick. And he's gone out wide. And Bogdanolo's chasing his heart. It's going to beat him all into touch, though. Just shepherded it along there from Johnny McNichol. Andrew Inch having the ball on a string. It's been near the halfway point of the first half. Line out here for Hughes again going to the back and all Captain De Rossi almost turned it over but it's Barkley that pulls it in and the Scarlets charge upfield too. Great driving more here as the Celtic Dragons turn it on itself. Shingler. Advantage. And can side it's a forward pass. Terrible mistake there. And they've given away easy possession. Where was the pass? We don't quite Crouch. see the pass there but it will Fine. be a scrum to pack down Set. for the Celtic Dragons. Doesn't even look like they've got a hook it. Arthur Dane is absolutely buried in there and it's given the ball. Big advantage here and power to the Scarlets. They turn that over easily. Big double cutout pass here and it is Davis who kicks this one away. Malcolm running across to claim it and he pulls it in nicely. Looking to counter attack to a ball and all is in touch with it. Two men trying to combine and they've done nothing but give the ball back to the Scarlets, who should be really taking this chance to go on the scoreboard. To the back, Barkley's the man, and again he pulls it in. And again they drive on oh, the Celtic Dragons. They might have to hold this one up. They've got to throw a man in. They're still not holding it up. Now they do turn it back, finally. Davis, little shimmy step, and he goes away. Tony McNichol says, I'll take three. Well, that's debatable. Was that the right call from the former Crusader winger? I'm not sure, but the Scarlet's lead 3-0. You look at this and you say, yeah, there was a try on out wide there, Johnny. Maybe they should have passed it. 28 minutes in, the Celtic Dragons again trail. Early stages of the second match as well. Coming a bit of a trend for this side. As Inch kicks off again. Oh, James! Catches that beautifully. Now they fire it wide. Oh, it goes to Sullivan. Out of the wing. Dane needs to pass it. It's terrible. Tick odds. Puts in a little grabber. Don't know if that was the original plan, but it kept the ball alive as there is a knock on. And just for the troubles, Richard Smith gets picked up and dumped down. Lee Halfpenny making that error that should and could. Other way around. Give this chance here to Ouch. the Celtic Dragons for points on the board. They won't want three. Set. They got a bonus point in game one, but you've got to remember, this scrum got absolutely dismantled in the first match. Oh, they have swum though. Here's Frederick Loeb. Loeb running alone. Loeb fires out the back. And she keeps alive. It's stolen. And away goes McNichol. But Tickhogs will save him. Oh, and Tickhog turns that over. He goes away to O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan, it's two on one. Oh, the pass is terrible. It is so bad. Nothing James could do about that. Here is Nickel, a pick and go. Fired a big ball wide. Here's Dane. He's only got Connolly. There's no way Connolly's going to run to the corner. Release. And he just goes back towards his traffic and holds on to the ball. Here's Andrew Winchell, he slides through one. That was a good run there. Nickel, first man to smash that right goal. Oh, could be a turnover here, turnover for the Scarlets. They've done exceptionally well. McNichol, oh, he's offloaded. Could be troublesome for them here. Do they want to kick this out they're going to hold on? They do kick, and the Scarlets will send the two teams to half time with a scoreline yet again, just three nil. What a half of stalemate rugby, but Johnny McNichol is the separator at the break. 3-0 the scoreline. They look so impressive in the second half last week against Toulon, but today, again, dreadful first half from the Celtic Dragons. Possession just nudged by the Scarlets, but territory has been all the Dragons. They've had all of the field territory, but not, much, not enough ball in the right parts of the field to do anything with it. McNichols' drop goal has put the Scarlets on the board first. And you've got to say that along with the scrum that has been operating pretty well as well have been the catalyst for the slender, slender lead. Hanninger is, is hammered both sides, 4-7. to seven. The Celtic Jack is making just another couple in that first half of rugby. Can they find some points? Scarlets, let's remember, they scored nothing against the Flakers in round number one. They're finding off some points. They're up 3-0 against the Celtic Dragons.
Well, this man needs to find his team some points. And he needs to do it rather rapidly as well. 40 minutes to go. Round two. The Scarlets up against the Celtic Dragons. 3 0 is the score. It's like a football score, but do not adjust your sets. This is rugby. And this could be an early chance to return over there for Mokla, but he cannot find it there. Petchel slips it away. Hughes does well. Too nicely away the ball. And they keep it slow. McNichol going one further to Jones. They're doing well here. The offloads are coming very nicely. It's away goes Samson Lee. He's still going to pass. This is magnificent from the Scarlets. It's still there for Davis. He's turned around. No one saw that one. Come inside. Ball away to Petchel. Petchel's still going himself. He's beaten. No, he's away. And this could be another chance to try. And it's all Scarlet to the second half. The offload game is so strong. They come in and steal the ball. They score here. It could be devastating for the Dragons. Release. Just six minutes into the half and already under the pump here. Jones. When a patch of all that is a great tackle Please. on him, and all oh, the dragons just about steal it. Scarlet's go away through Hughes. Open for Price! He shrugged away one half tackle. Please. And Inchester coming and help out. This is all red of the Scarlets after half time. A great offloading Patchell. Patchell's gone through. Can he offload? He needs to! He can't do it, and it's turned over from James. Away to Tickle, quickly, too low, and Lobe running away at the ball. He's gonna thump it, he's out at 22! And it's a big counter punch, but it will come all the way back, because that was out in the full by the big man at number eight. Right idea, he had to do it, he was all alone. Either way, it was a turnover. But it's back to Scarlett's down. What can they cook up here? They've won at the back nicely. Barkley's the man once again to do it. Now they use their back line. Great offloading game here by the Scarlet's. Can't believe how close this one is as well. Richard Mwakwa comes in Release. with Inch at the bottom and just drives Patchell to the ground. Barkley. There's so many defenders here by the Dragons looking to turn this ball over. They don't see it again. Good tackle. Richard Mock was really coming to the fore here. And against, oh, that's a turnover as well. Boyd, the number eight for the Scarlets, had no chance here of holding onto that ball. O'Sullivan comes sliding forward. Where is the scrum half now? He's nowhere to be found. He's still getting up. Dane plays instead. Oh, Brousseau goes inside. Nickel. Gets that charging nice. run forward. Oh, it's, it's looking awful. All flakes like, isn't it here? Here's Mokwa. It's a little De Rossi. Johnny De Rossi, the captain, looks wide. Great ball to Walla. Bogdanola, he could go in. And Bogdanola will score. A brilliant try. The Celtic Dragons finally get on the board. That was fortuitous to say the least for the Dragons. 5 3 the score. Bogdanola. A great try from him. It wasn't his pass. It was almost like an intercept, and he just had enough to get away from Harpenny, who had to close the gap. Not enough speed. Look at this from Jordy De Rossi. Take a bow, son. That ball was going out wide to Tom James. No one saw Ola. Not the defense, not the attack, and he just scored straight through the middle. First try in his first appearance for Ola. But another captain's knock coming in from Jordi De Rossi. Now it is the man on the left wing, O'Sullivan, who will be taking the shots at goal. No pressure here on Andrew Winch, who was so good without them in the first game. And put right out in front, you probably could have given it to any of the 15. They would have nailed that over, but 7-3 is the score. Celtic Dragons lead Scarlets, and it's midway through the second half. Back to Lee Halfpenny. And this retro kit, as it's been called in the comments. And underway we go once again. A, a desperate pass out wide. And here come the Celtic Dragons once more. Great ball away to Winch. Inch has been behind them again. Comes up against Halfpenny. Sips him over the top. Can he regather? Oh, he can. But he is drilled into touch. Oh, Andrew Inch. He's still here, folks. He's still about. Great little run. Sets his team up nicely for field territory. And Hughes, who has had line-out throw after line-out throw, that is a terrible one. Mokba says thanks very much. And Andrew Inch runs once more, cuts him in half, and he outflows, given away. 
And now here come the Scarlets, fending through one great tackle over the top from Oscar Connolly. That could have been a try one way and then the other. It is 10 to go, and it is 7-3. Now the Scarlets Grace. are in a position where they could be the Steelers. It's pick and go, coming off here from Grace. Davis. Throwing numbers into the ruck are the Celtic Dragons. Barkley goes back and they change directions through ball. Now out wide they go. Great tackle there. Grace. Richard Smith was just easy to read as a book. We can go from Jones. Mokwa's got him all alone. Mokwa's got to turn this over. How is that not a turnover? Mokwa was just tearing at the ball, but he did, got it eventually. Here is Oscar Connolly away to Bruzzo. He has got four support players here. Oh, it's intercepted. That Grace. is heartbreaking for the Celtic Dragons. Stolen there from Johnny McNichol. I couldn't Grace. believe it. Three minutes only to go. 7-3 the score. Can the Scarlets go end to end? I hope not. For the sake of the Celtic Dragons. Turnover from Loeb. And away they come. Can't attack ball. Jones squirts it away to no one. Dane picks it up. He's still got Mokwa. And he's decided to throw it to touch instead. Arthur Dane has been quite involved in this game. That ball away to Mokwa was nowhere near him. Hughes comes off for Elias. We must have Kruger coming on for the lead. So changes here in the ranks for the Scarlets. Is, well, you've got to say, they're still in this game. So here is Elias. He's having his first touch of the ball. He's gone to the back and it's nicely claimed there as well for them. They won't want to kick this out here, the Scarlets. They've got to run it. They've got to go end to end. Giving it away to McNichol. He's kicked it out. What on earth is he doing? Johnny McNichol says, we'll take the one point. in the Celtic Dragons, well... Contrasting performance in their opening two matches. So good in the second half of the first game. So average all day today here against the Scarlets, who themselves had to pick up a big change from their opening game. 7-3. That was a score, yes. Can't believe the inconsistencies of scorelines that we're having in this series. We're having blowouts and we're having real tight, low scorers and blowouts. It's all over the shop, but it is at least good. We're having some close games. The Scarlets, when they got that three, that was probably the time that they were ever going to score a try. The rest of the game was in their own half where they didn't want to kick much except for after 80 minutes. And then later on, um, they didn't have the ball in the uh, Dragons' half. So it's, it's a, a, a tough predicament for them to be in. The Scarlets, they didn't have the chances, the opportunities, but they definitely had enough possession to do something about it. And it was a close game. Their defence was amazing. 7-3 the score. Johnny Manickel, the drop goal. Bogdanola, the try for the Dragons. And, of course, it was Shane O'Sullivan, the conversion from the sideline. Another low scorer to go with our first match of round two. And then between that, of course, is a big one um, for the Guardians in between. Bizarre game, a bizarre game. The Scarlets took out possession 55 to 45, but they lost out territory by pretty much the same margin as well. Celtic Dragons made a lot of defensive tackles. The Scarlets were right up there as well, making the work in defense. The Dragons offloaded a lot. They gave away a lot of opportunities by making that one extra pass. It just didn't go to hand. Line breaks four to eight, yet there was only the one try in this game. So plenty of opportunity. Andrew Winch could have scored one. He was just held on to by Halfpenny and Co. as he made the chip and chase break. Could have been a game changer moment there, but in the end, it was just the one try to Bogdan Ola. 7-3, the final score. Again, no bonus points for the Celtic Dragons here today. So I think this is three games in the round now, and no team from the subscriber sides have scored a bonus point. Tough work at the office here for these teams. So only one more game remains in round two. That is the Flakers up against the Lions. That one is at Emirates Airlines Park. So that is another away match for our subscriber side too. Maybe that's why the games have changed. But the All Flakes struggled. I think they were away from home. Um, the Dragons struggled. That was their first away game. Or probably the All Flakes home. We have to check that. But um, possibly the catalyst behind the Celtic Dragons. Um, just not being... As explosive as they were in round number one. So there's our next match is the Flakers and Lions. Uh, let's have a look at the table where teams sit now. We'll go to the bottom two line have suffered another loss. So they sit dead, dead last. We have one game, which is Flakers 
lines left in round two, and that is it. The Celtic Dragons do lead the table, although I'm not sure how, because they have a, a lesser points differential than the Guardians. So by rights, in my understanding of how round-robin tables work, it's points differential is always the first divider, followed by matches one. Um, 36 plus is the Dragons, Guardians 45. So they should be uh, technically top, but I'm presuming they rugby challenge the uh, groundbreaking game that it is goes by alphabetical order, which sees C before G. That's probably it. So Dragons sit top alongside the Guardians. So we'll give them first equal, to be fair. The All Flakes, just one point adrift as no side has taken a bonus point this round just yet from the subscriber teams. The Exeter Chiefs, they have two from um, their opening two games. They have not won a match, so not very good for them. The only side to pick up two. Uh, then we have the Flakers who are next in action with four points. So they'll either go, well, nowhere down if they lose to the Lions who uh, have no points from their first match, a 21-point loss. So they'll be wanting to pick up from that to carry on their season. So look at the fixtures, and it was the Lions who went down to the Guardians in round one. So they'll be wanting to definitely do better in their second game. And here is the last match of round two, Lions and Flakers. That one is an away match for the Flakers. Alrighty, that does wrap us up for today's episode of Global Rugby Challenge, the subscriber series. Thank you all for tuning and watching. Hope you enjoyed another really, what, what would you call it, nerve-wracking almost match for the Celtic Dragons. They never look like conceding late. They just never know. They took a long time to get into that game. They conceded the first points from the Scarlets, who now have three points to their name, but also went down by only the four. So the Scarlets have picked up a bonus point as well. Fair play to them. They are on the board, unlike the Lions and Toulon. So that is us today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And let me know your thoughts on who you think of anyone deserved to be in Team of the Week from the Celtic Dragons in today's episode. And I'll see you all next time for the Flakers versus the Lions. Until then, take care.